Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is Catania Alvin speaking. Now, we're still on the Brexit situation. There's so much going on and there's so much horrendous treason and fighting back. So this is bombard body language. I personally think she's an extremely good expose of what is really behind the hidden smiles and the dangerous deception that is going on. So let's start with this body language, most recent one of Theresa May. She's making herself tiny at the top and at the bottom. So that's one of your clues that she's beginning to hide. We've agreed that the extension can be terminated when the withdrawal agreement has been ratified. Even now, sitting there watching her read her speech or her notes, she's not really moving. Usually when you see Theresa May, yeah, she has her quick jerky moments as she looks, but she does look a little longer than half a second. It's quick, up and down, and barely the up part. She's also not moving any other part. She's worn this coat, I swear I think she's done it on purpose, to hide. It's got that really big collar. It envelops her shoulders. It's very loose in there, so you can't see what... But when you're looking, she's still not moving that much. She's hiding. So we see the legs come in. We're making herself small. We're doing barely any movement at the top. Short, short burst of looking at her audience, and she's in... Heidi Mose. Basically, she's keeping her cards very close. It's an American saying. Your plan is being hidden. You're trying to hide that plan from your audience. And no, it's not a plan for you. Which is my key request of my fellow leaders. For example, this means that if we're able to... Key request of fellow leaders, and you see her kind of actually stretch out her back and go up. I wouldn't give this much credence because she's keeping herself so tight in a downward small movement, she actually just might be stretching. Remember what we've said. When you get someone who's that stressed and they're hiding and their muscles go tight, they do have to stretch a whole lot more than a normal person because it gets uncomfortable. Hold your hand in a position that's not natural nor normal. You're going to have to stretch it a lot more often. Pass a deal in the first three weeks of May. We will not have to take part in European elections, that will officially leave the EU on Saturday, the 1st of June. The fact that she doesn't give real good eye contact on the actual date we could leave the 1st of June, that's a no. So you're not going to leave the 1st of June. The rest <laughs> of it where she barely gives eye contact on the key points. When you speak a sentence, you get the subject, the predicate, the verb. Those are like those key words in that sentence that you give the appropriate body language to. It sounds very generic, but I'm trying to explain. So when you see someone give good eye contact on the word the, or of, or have, it means that they're not looking at you with any bump to that sentence. It's just a red sentence. So nothing in that sentence has any validity. The UK should have left the EU by now, and I sincerely regret it. Well, that's another interesting. So she starts out strong, giving eye contact to the audience. The UK should have left. And then she goes down, pretty much halfway through that. Well, obviously, many of you already know she's a remainer. Right, we'll just go on to the next one. This is Theresa May being interviewed on June the 18th, 2018. Also from Bombard Bonnie Language. And, and she's talking about Brexit. Now, it's so important that we learn the skills of how to read body language. We'd not fall into the traps that we do if we did. I guess we'll just pull the nuggets out of this one faster. It's interesting because what's coming through uh, to me is that um, through um, Bonbard's la body language information is that Theresa May totally believes in herself and what she's doing, which is why even though it's been suggested that she resigns, she's not taken up on even, possibly even considering that course. A very interesting. Now I'm just, Andrew Margos, can I ask you, and uh, we'll go on from there. Would you have been able to make this announcement if we were still inside the EU? Well, we are making an announcement which has, as I say, as a country. All right, now she's changed. We are making it, and she's wiggling her head all constantly but she's also leaned forward. 
we will be contributing more, a bit more, but also we will have that sum of money that is available from the European Union. But we're leaving the, yeah. the question as to, as to whether I'd be sitting here and saying this if we were... And she's keeping those hands up as she does it. It's like whatever she's got in her hand, her mental mind, she's got it in her hands, her mental mind. And that's what she's holding on to. That, that money that they're not going to be paying the EU, that's, what, that's their saving grace right there. That's what they got. That's what she's proud of. We were going to carry on in the EU. It's completely hypothetical because we're not going to carry on in the EU. People voted and we're going to get it out. And then, as she comes into this part, she jumps forward. We were going to carry on in the EU. It's completely hypothetical. That jump forward is completely hypothetical. And she's jumping towards the... And she's got the believe me look. The interviewer. This is the high stress. Now, all that time she's talking about NHS, money... He even throws at her two and a half year wait time for cancer. Doesn't phase her at all. But here we are talking about Brexit. The arms are coming up. They're getting tighter. She's holding on to something. She's jumping forward towards the interviewer. That is a lot of stress. I'm just talking about Brexit. And not just talking about it. It is going to happen. It is. It is. Because we're not going to carry on in the EU. People voted and we're going to get it out. But this is, a, this is a re a from, from, from your point of view, this is a real Brexit dividend which can now be spent on the NHS. Yes, it, it, and I, I look at it in very simple terms. And she again, she comes, she's coming forward again. I look at it in very simple terms. Yes. At the moment... Is okay, I'm going on a moment. Now, this is a moment whereby it says it all. That one. Ugh. So she doesn't like it. She's never liked it. She didn't want it. When she first announced it, and they were going to have a plan, I told you then they didn't have a plan. Let me go back a fraction. Here we go from there. Exactly. And we'll, exactly. be leaving, we'll be leaving the EU on the 29th of March, 2019. Oh, that look, right? <laughs> it says it all. I mean, anyone, any one of us, who has been believing Mrs. May, the Prime Minister of England, shocker. It's it's right here. See, right there. Ugh. Interesting. There. That one. Ugh. So she doesn't like it. She's never liked it. She didn't want it. When she first announced it. And they were going to have a plan. I told you then they didn't have a plan. And so I'm sitting there looking at it as she's going about it. She still doesn't like it. Ugh. Disgust. Ew. She does not want to leave. Are you a woman of your word? <laughs> yes, I am, Andrew. And I am. Oh, oh, yes, I am. <laughs> and she has lied and lied and lied. She's lied so much that um, Bill Cash is uh, suggesting she leaves, asking her to leave. Sir William Cash, thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Does my, does my, does my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, appreciate the anger that her abject surrender last night has generated across the country, having broken a hundred times, promises a hundred times not to extend the time? She knows what I'm saying, and she's, she's done that. Does she also accept that this withdrawal agreement undermines our democracy, the constitutional status of Northern Ireland, our right to govern ourselves, control over our laws, and undermines our national interest? Will she resign? First of all so, so from that we've had, in fact we had this before, Brexit date shock. Has UK already legally left EU? Are we out of Brussels? This is to do with Robin Tilbrook, chairman of the English Democrats. So the English Democrats bring the case to get a declaration that the UK has left the EU as of the 29th of March 2019. And so it is a legal case that actually is moving forward and it's very likely to win. And finally, 
Here is Nigel Farage with the launching of the Brexit party. He looks so happy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So there is demand for a new party, is there? You know, in some ways I can scarcely believe I'm doing this because I did actually think when 498 MPs voted for Article 50, which said quite explicitly that we would leave the European Union on the 29th of March with or without a withdrawal agreement. I thought, well, we won the referendum. 85% of us have voted for parties in the general election who say they will honour the result of the referendum. And then 498 of them have said it's going to happen. I, I did actually, rather stupidly, for a moment, believe that we won. Uh, but it became clear pretty early on, really, the so-called negotiation. Yes, and do you remember the Kit Kat case? Brexit being in, in like a Kit Kat. You shove the, well, uh, the, the cream inside. The, our Remainer Parliament, our Remainer Cabinet, and indeed our Remainer Prime Minister, we're going to do their utmost to delay, dilute, and in many cases to actually stop and overturn Brexit. And I think what we've seen over the course of the last few weeks is the betrayal, willful betrayal, of the greatest democratic exercise in the history of this nation. And when I began to realise back in November, December, that extension was almost certain to come, that there would be more European elections, I thought, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to set up a party. I'm going to call it the Brexit Party, but given that it's the most Googled word in the English language, I wonder whether the Electoral Commission would allow me to use the name. Well, they have, and you are here today at the birth, at the launch of a new force in British politics. Welcome to the Brexit Party. Right. Welcome to the Brexit Party. There'll be lots more coverage on that. We have gone through and still are going through an extraordinary period of time. But the boil has burst in the respect that Theresa May has been shown to be betraying the British people and treasonous to boot. Now, Robin Tilbrook, here he writes, this is our only chance to complete what we voted for in the EU referendum. We are serving the legal papers required to bring this case, but we really need all the support that Leave supporters can give us to make sure that we can make the expensive legal muscle whom the government and Remainers will instruct against us. Now, he goes on to say, please help us generously, as, as generously as you can. And I'm sharing this message with all you who watch this. There is a donate button on this website. So all these links I will put in the description box so that they can actually set up, which they've already done, in the High Court of Justice Administrative Court. And it's between the Queen on the application of the English Democrats and Prime Ministers, the Secretary of State for ex existing, for exiting the European Union. And there it goes on the grounds of application. And it's a very important one because really, from his perspective, and this is what will be judged in the High Court, we left on March the 29th, God bless everyone. Love and light to you all. Bye-bye.